one of my favorite things about it. So my day job, I don't know, did I did I tell you all last time what I do as a day job? Make graphs. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I spend most of my day looking at like Excel spreadsheets. Um, and I think that part of why that appeals to me and why weaving appeals to me is very similar. And that's that I'm the kind of person that's evenly split between kind of linear and nonlinear. Like the left brain, light, left, right brain test, like I score like exactly 50-50. And so sometimes that like linear side of my brain really gets in the way of me being creative sometimes because that's where the inner critic lives. That's where like all of the, like where the editor lives, right? Um, and so what I find in weaving is that these straight up and downs that are already predetermined provides a linearity that can allow that side of my brain to be satisfied and stop complaining and trying to control everything because everything is a little bit controlled already. Um, and so uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with like the Bauhaus movement, like art history about the Bauhaus movement. Um, one of their kind of sayings, is that a thing? Saying? I don't know. Mottos. Motto, yeah, Maybe. was um, like freedom within limitations and that sometimes when you have a couple of predetermined limitations, it can allow you more freedom of creativity. Um, and so that's one of the things that I love about weaving, and I hope that at least some of you who are like scientific minded maybe might find the same appeal in it. Um, but the other thing to keep in mind because of the upright lines that we have of the warps, so the up and down ones, those are called warp, and then the back and forth are called left. So the warps, because they're straight up and down, we're working on a grid. And so your design, which may might have some like really beautiful curvaceous round shapes, some of that is going to be pixelated um, just by virtue of the way that weaving is. Um, so if you can embrace the pixel art quality of it and just go with it <laughs> rather than fighting it, that's my recommendation. So if it even like helps you, um, sometimes I'll draw designs out on graph paper to see if the pixelation is something that I can live with. But I've gotten to the point where I've been weaving long enough that I just, I embrace it. Um, so let's see if I have a good example. Here we go. So this one, this is a piece that I wove on one of these looms just because I wanted to see what it was like. Um, it's really great because of the way that the warps go all the way to the end here. I actually wove all the way from one edge to the other. And so when I took it off the cardboard, there was no fringe. It's already like finished. So. <laughs> It's pretty awesome because you can see usually there's fringe to be dealt with. Which will really help when we're sewing them all together. Yes. To not have fringe. Yes, because all of these little loops can just be hooked to each other. So it's been thought out and it's good. <laughs> but you can see that this like kind of chevron design that I did actually has steps in it. Mm -hmm. And that's that wasn't because I meant to do steps. It was because it's, it's pixelated due to the, the warps. So there's... Some things that you can try to do to get around that but i would encourage you to embrace it and just learn to love it because there's so many amazing designs that are done with the pixelation incorporated as part of the design so all right i think i'm done blabbing all right let's get started <laughs> so aisha was kind enough to let me use her design so this is her cartoon and so i'm gonna ask which color oh this is the blue yeah okay i don't have any dark blue right now so so we'll use this blue. yeah and then, do you have any of those needles? Oh yeah, here. Okay. They're in my bag, hold on. Okay. So when you're weaving, I recommend that you cut off a length of yarn that's about the size that you can comfortably like manage with your arms stretched out. Otherwise, there's gonna be a lot of like this kind of thing happening. And so I usually use like an arm span. Uh, and most yarn, you can just break without having scissors. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it takes kind of a good, swift, firm. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> but there are scissors floating around. Cool. So I want all of you, when you take a loom, to also take one of these. There's one. You may recognize these from kindergarten. <laughs> yes. But the beautiful thing is, is that even with big fat yarn, it's really easy to get it through. And so. Um, Raise your hand if you ever made a pot holder on a pot holder loom. <coughs> awesome. <laughs> this is not really that different. 
<laughs> um, most tapestry weaving is done in what's called plain weave. Um, and plain weave is where we go over and under every other thread. And then on the way back, we go over the ones that we went under last time. Um, typically, uh, tapestry weaving is also considered what's a, a weft-based fabric, meaning that you can't see the warps when you're all done. And I'll show you some techniques for that as well. But getting started, all we need is your loom, some yarn on a needle, and I'm going to start on an under. And the reason I'm doing that, I will show you. And can everybody see? I'm just going under every other one. This every is like one? every other one. Oh, okay. So you're not tying the yarn, you're just looking it through. Yep, I just have it kind of folded through. <coughs> and then I'm going to pull it all the way until I have about a three inch tail. And then every time you start with a new piece of yarn or end with an old piece of yarn, I recommend leaving about a three inch tail because that gives you something that you can kind of deal with when you're all done. But I don't want you to worry like over much about dealing with them now. I'm a big fan of messy backs because at the end, you just go through and tie them off and just cut them short. Oh, and then even you never in have the middle. Hmm? Even in the middle, you have the tails. See the yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll get there. <clears throat> Um, but the reason I started on an under is because then I can take this end and just wrap it around and tuck it. Can everybody see? So what I did was I took the end that was coming out below and I wrapped back out around and then came out again. And then I'm going to just snug that down. The reason I'm doing that is just to kind of lightly secure it at either end. And I recommend doing this every time you have an end that ends at either edge because it just keeps it kind of in place. You wouldn't do that if it was in the middle? In the middle? I'll show you what to do in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then once we have it secured, I'm going to do a thing that I call bubbling. And that's actually also a technical tapestry term. We like to have really silly words in tapestry for some reason. <laughs> um, and do you see how the yarn is going like this? And I'm intentionally making that little hill before I use my needle to squish it down. The reason is that this yarn right now is making a journey, like over and under. It's not traveling in a straight line. And so by doing that little bubble of yarn before I pack it down, I'm giving it extra slack in this direction that will then, when I push it flat, will be translated into that journey. Does that make sense? Do they make questions about that? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep going all the way. And I'm going to recommend that you do at least one pass all the way from one end and then back before you start following your design, just so that we have a nice end at either end. So you always want to have one whole row all the way across either end at the start and at the finish. So I'm going to just keep going all the way across. I'm just going under every other one. And I'll show you the bubbling again. I'm going to pull it. And this is a trick that I have is I'll pull it kind of at a 45 degree angle. And then I'll pull that end down. And that's made my bubble. So I had it at a 45 degree angle. I pulled the end down to make my bubble. And then I'll use my needle to kind of cut my bubble in half and turn it into two smaller bubbles to evenly distribute that length on either side. And then I'll pack it all the way down. And you can just use like your fingernails to just squish it down. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh, you're like taking up. Sorry. <laughs> you can do this side. No, it's fine. So I just wanted to like draw a picture. So this is a cross section. Like we're looking from above. So if we're looking from above, at the warp threads, what I'm trying to do, instead of doing like this kind of thing, where my weft is causing my warp threads to be displaced, instead what I'm trying to do is this thing, where my weft um, is snaking in and out of my warp threads, instead of pushing them out of the way. And so bubbling is a technique for doing that. So we're going to lay our 
our yarn in in a hill so that when we pack it down, it has the extra slack it needs to make that journey. Mm -hmm. And the number one reason to do this is, I don't know if you've seen very much uh, weaving probably like on Instagram that's being done by like beginners. And you'll see a weaving that looks like this. Mm. On the fringe. Has anybody ever seen a weaving that looked like that? Mm. It had like a waist. Um, and the number one cause of that is not giving <coughs> the yarn enough slack to make that journey. Because doing this eventually will start to pull it in at the sides. Okay. Does it have to do with hiding the warp also? <laughs> so now on the way back, this is hard to see because I have dark blue yarn and then like black warp, but the way that I know which ones to go under is the ones that were covered on the, the row right below. So I can just go under any of the ones that I didn't go under last time. So I'm going under the overs and over the unders, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you what happens if I don't do that. So if I go under the same ones that I went under last time, can everybody see that's happening? Mm -hmm. And then I pull. Yeah, just <laughs> undo it and it just yeah. unweaves. Yeah. Fun. And there are times when you may need to do some unweaving. Yep. Like most. So it's, it's good to know. Is <laughs> there a reverse term for that? Like flogging or? No, I think they actually, people actually call it unweaving. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping for another silly term. I know, right? Excited. <laughs> so I'm going to go under the ones that I went over. And then I'm going to show you the other thing that you can do to help keep your weaving from having a waste. And that is to manage how much yarn you're leaving when you make that turn to go back the direction you just came from. And I'm going to do that just by holding down on it with my finger before I pull it tight. And what that does is it makes it kind of hug snugly. Did everybody see that? I just held here so that when I pulled it didn't pull. Yes. So what I want is for the warp thread on the side to be kind of just hugged by the yarn without actually being displaced at all. Okay. And then I don't want to leave, like if I do that then my weaving is going to have ears all the way up. Can you see? Yes. Ears. So instead, I'm going to just put my, my finger right there and then pull. I'm going to do my little 45 degree angle and then create my bubble. And then snuggle down. You want to create the bubble every time. Every time. Always have bubbles. The only time that you're not going to be able to do bubbles is when you get up to here and you just won't have room. And so you just do the best you can. <laughs> like loose enough. Like yeah, I'll show you again. So I'm going under all of the ones that were covered on the row below. I'm starting to use some yarn. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to be holding on to here so that I'm not like pulling this part that I already packed down overly tightly. So I can just, just grab onto it and then pull at a 45 degree angle and then make a bubble. And then with a bigger bubble, I would say a bubble that's any bigger than like eight warp threads wide, I would try and split it to redistribute the extra slack more evenly across. Can you bubble like just one, like over the whole thing and then just kind of like cut it? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the only thing is your needles are not as long as the whole thing, so you're probably not gonna go right. all the way across, <laughs> but if you do, yeah. And you can see that like there's some places where I have like a little like ears coming out. And that tells me that maybe I bubbled too much. So I'm just gonna like re like re snug it a bit. And yeah. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna show us how to do something like that? Yes. Okay. And we're about to fuzzy. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but before we get to the textural elements that you can add, I wanna talk about building shapes. So this is a design where we want to do like a color in here and then we're going to do something else over here. And so now that I've done my first row and I've got my firm edge, 
now I get to start like playing with my design. And so when I go back, I'm not gonna go all the way across. I'm just gonna go up to the line where I'm supposed to stop. It's like, it makes perfect sense once you see it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is why having a cartoon is so great because I have much fewer decisions to make about how far across to go. All I'm doing is literally, it's like coloring in a coloring book, except I'm just doing it with yarn. So the cartoon for this one, was it drawn out like that, or do you freehand that? That was more freehanded. But okay. I definitely used a cartoon for the circle, because circles are kind of hard. Okay. I can attest. <laughs> yeah, the thing about circles is that in weaving, you have to have like the straight sides be a lot longer than you would think, otherwise you end up with a circle that looks like it has little ears on the side. <laughs> so I'm pulling, so I'm gonna put my finger on the side to manage how <coughs> tightly I'm pulling it. I'll do my little bubble and then pack it down. And I just went up to more or less where the line is and now I'm gonna go back the other direction. I can see why you really love this. <laughs> if your brain is linear and creative at the same time. Yeah. yeah, because you can have, you have these vertical lines that are like, it's like a bones. You have the confinement. That are already there. Space. You have the confinement yeah. of the design. And then within that design, you can play as much as you want with things like color and texture. Um, yeah. Weaving um, is a safe sport. <laughs> it's totally. I just had so many realizations about my mom and her coding and her knitting, and it's just like, <laughs> it makes so much sense. Is now. she a knitter She's, and a coder? Yeah. That's, I think yeah. that's really common. She, she knits like very complicated patterns too. That's so you can that's see what I like about knitting. Yeah. <laughs> um, go ahead and ask your question. Oh, I'm okay with that. So, like, the cartoon, mm -hmm. is this something worth drawing? Or, I guess. The cartoon that we drew, the thing we did. Yeah, that, with the color, tearing the paper, and then you're. Yeah, then you, yes. What if we don't want to use that? Then you can make a new one. Make a new okay, one. Okay, cool. Yeah. So but, that's, I, but that's like the cartoon is the design we're making? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. I highly encourage you not to wait. So if you're like, I don't, I just don't know what to make, guys, <coughs> and then this whole like spiral of I don't know what to make, and then it's next week before you start. Please do not do that. That is not really an option. <laughs> and so that's why I gave a path with finding the shapes and like using the negative space yeah. so that it's like, that takes away that freak out mode. And also remember that this is gonna be part of a larger thing. So it's not just you anymore. And you can actually let go of some of just you mm -hmm. and think of yourself as part of this group. Does that make sense? It seems to me like a really great way to let go of some perfectionism that it, like plagues us as makers. Um, when something, like the per the perfectness of your individual piece like doesn't matter that much because it's gonna be part of a whole. Um, I also love that you are like sharing yarn with each other, like, cause hand spun yarn has so much of your energy in it. And I think it's really cool that like as a community, you're gonna be like having that kind of energy exchange. I'm like super excited about it. All right, so. Oh, Sarah's got a question. So, yeah. um, to jump off of this question, I mean, it's not so much a question, more like it's an idea. Yeah. Uh, could maybe the people who are struggling to pick work like with other people's creations that they didn't pick and be like, oh, yeah. I like that one, can I have that one? Yeah, Absolutely. I colored in a bunch. <laughs> Yeah, that's, really, that's, a, that's a really cool idea. Like I have trading a couple cartoons. Mm -hmm. totally. oh. Oh. Are we going to collaboratively like place our weavings, kind of like we did the pictures on the wall that one day? Yes. To decide? Yes. Like how they're going to be arranged? I have a waste question on that. Cool. Okay, everybody. All right. So, sorry. Can you hold on yeah. for just a second? So, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what happens when the line of your cartoon goes in between the two lines like how do you decide what to do and like there's no wrong answer unfortunately there's also no right answer um, you just kind of like do the best you can and just decide what you're gonna do but there's a very important consideration that I would like to encourage you to have and that is to avoid creating undercuts for yourself 
So you have an empty board back here. Yes. Also. So what that means is if I were to weave this section before coloring in this section, I would be creating a very narrow place for my thumb. Can you say that again? So if I were to color this section before this section, I would be creating a very narrow place for me to be trying to get my needle into. Mm -hmm. And you already are going to have that in the last like centimeter or so of your weaving, and there's no reason to do that to yourself in advance. So you do the narrowest parts first. Uh, actually, so let me draw. It. So what you want to do is build your shapes up from underneath and make sure that everything is cradled from below before you do it. So for an, for example, let's say you have your piece and you have like that's your design. What you want to do is do this section first up to where the circle would start. Then you don't do the circle yet. You would do this section up to the midpoint of the circle and this section up to the midpoint of the circle. So when you start on the right there where the three is, where would you start? It doesn't like matter. Your, oh. In the middle or at the edge. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's no, there's not really any mistakes in this. They're just design elements. <laughs> like, it's like so, yeah. so if you start in the middle, is it just a little tail that's sticking up and you and the end. and then you just slice it off? You just want to tuck it to the back. Or, oh. Tuck it to the back. Like, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I mean, that's like not even. So, it's have you, has anybody here ever like walked up to a painting in somebody's house and pulled it off and looked at the back to see if the back was like gross? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, these are paintings. Like, tapestry weaving is a two dimensional art that's usually displayed on the wall, and the back does not need to look as good as the front. You just tuck it to the back. <laughs> We're also going to be putting them together and having a back. Yeah. A back. So, so we're gonna do a I little actually, bit of finishing on the back, just time to make sure things don't get don't like come apart. Mm -hmm. But it's really not that important as far but as I would strongly encourage you whenever possible to start ends towards the middle so that they're not flapping out from the edges because they're easier to hide if they're towards the middle of the weaving. So so yeah, you could start here and then go like this, and then start here and go like this. Do you and start then, from under no matter what, even if the last stitch you ended on was another? Yes. What I like to do is say this is the last two threads, and the last, so I've gone over and then I'm supposed to go under, then I can tuck it. Or if I'm going under, then I could do the last stitch under again just so that I can tuck it. So Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you're always tucking it mm -hmm. when, when, when your it's yarn on. runs out or when it's at the edge? Just when it's at the edge. Okay. Um, just when your yarn runs out. Otherwise, you just wrap around and go back the other way. Okay. Just at the edge, just when your yarn is out. Just yes. at the edge. Those two things yeah. together yes. are what make you do the wrap. Okay. And the wrap is optional. It's just a way of keeping them tightly tucked. So if your yarn runs out in the, in middle, the middle, then you just let it be there mm -hmm. and then the rest just of Just tuck it to the back and start okay. a new one. And then the new one, you tuck that tail to the back as well. And so then on the back of your weaving, to the same back. you'll have mm -hmm. two tails together. I'm like getting a chocolate. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. So this is a place <laughs> where I ran out of yarn. Wait, so you tuck it to the yarn. same back? Like place. You, you wrap it around the same? Yes, I just tucked them to the back of the thread that I would have been going under. So and so this knot is placed in a place that would have just been an under. But instead it was a thread yeah. and a thread. So you like push it down through the four threads, like between those two. Yeah. Like between the the weaving and the cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. Are we just not when you're all done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After it's off the loom, like don't even think about it until you're all done, and the loom has been discarded. You can actually knot something that short. No, I tied a knot and then cut it. So leave yourself like three or four inches. Okay. So don't and run out. Don't go right to the right. end of your thread. Leave yourself. Enough yourself. to tie a knot. Yeah. Stuff okay. to tie. Okay. Can I finish this though? Yes. Really quick? Okay. So one, two, three. And then once we have this cradle built so that there will be no spots that are trapped and exposed, then we get to do the circle. And then you would close it in on either side, like five, six, seven. And we 
would you start the circle from like the bottom? Mm -hmm. Always start from the bottom. Think of tapestry weaving as something that you build from the bottom up. But then when you're done, you can actually turn it over. Yeah. It doesn't, or have to, yeah, yeah. doesn't have to live in that orientation. Yeah. I weave things upside down pretty frequently. Yeah. But we're um, weaving like the front of it mm -hmm. as the front of it. We're yes. Flip it around. Right. Yeah. Okay. You can choose to weave it from the back, but you won't be able to see what it's going to look like at the end. True. Until you're all done. Because of the way these looms are. That'll be a nice surprise. <laughs> That's entirely up to you. All right. Chalk on the pants. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Questions before I move on to some textural stitches? I have a waist question. Yeah. Can you tell that you're developing a waist while you're weaving and then kind of Correct. adjust accordingly? Or? Yes, that will happen. Does it also happen where you don't know you have a waist and you pull it off and you suddenly have a waist? You'll see it. Okay. It'll, it'll look like this on your loom. Just okay. Like That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> so what about those little, like, hash marks? Like, the details? Like, because there's, like, the bigger shapes, but, like, how, how do you... Even... She's like, I don't how know do you envision that? that. I, don't I don't know. know. I'm just going to try it. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I'll just add a... One yeah. thing in there, and then just. I mean, you could go in, and, like, you know, do all kinds of stuff. Like a darker color there. Yeah. Or something. yeah. Is there scissors? Do you not want? To, I think we should start and then do a textural yeah. stitch. Is that okay? Yeah. Is, is that all right with everybody? If you get like your first row in, first couple and start rows. like maybe 